Welcome to Ortho Eval Pal, where we help you build confidence in your orthopedic evaluation and management skills. Hello, everyone. This is Paul Marquis, your host of Ortho Eval Pal podcast, and I'm uh, very excited to be here again today. Um, as we get geared up here, we're going to be talking a little bit more about different orthopedic problems, but I want to kind of set into place kind of some uh, things you should recognize when treating people with knee problems. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the three causes of quadriceps shutdown. Now, I am a very big advocate of recognizing quad shutdown. Why is that? Your quadricep muscle is a strong and powerful muscle. It is what helps you go downstairs. It helps you squat, helps you get up out of a squatted position, get up off a toilet, out of a chair. Um, it is instrumental in, in holding you up when you're trying to balance. So a very important muscle. Now, if it's shut off, it's really going to be disabling to you. You're not going to be able to use your leg very well. And it's also going to kind of mess up how your kneecap functions over your femur. And there are many reasons why people develop quadriceps shutdown or what we call reflex inhibition. So um, today we're going to talk about three major points that I think are super important to remember. And um, if you see patients with different knee injuries or even have been immobilized for a long time, you're going to notice that they're going to have some quad atrophy. So recognize that and um, probably make some recommendation on how to get that quadricep fired back up so it functions better. So First thing we're going to talk about is uh, our, our number one cause is pain. All right, so pain, especially around the patellofemoral joint, can shut the quadricep muscle down. And this is why you know I am somewhat apprehensive to send patients who do high-level activities such as sports or work that requires lower extremity agility back to activity too early. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, we see this often. Patients have an arthroscopy, or they might even have a, a knee strain and they might go a week or two and it kind of gets better but we end up seeing these people down the road several months to find that their quad is not firing very well maybe they're not straightening their leg uh, as well as they should be and so their knee isn't quite functioning as well and these folks oftentimes will develop patellofemoral dysfunction um, which uh, we just spoke about in the last episode so make sure that um, if somebody's having pain around the knee you are thinking in the back of your head, if they're having pain, they're going to be having shutdown because your brain automatically senses that you have pain in the knee and shuts the quad down kind of subconsciously and you don't even realize it. And most patients will say, wow, I didn't even notice one leg is so much smaller than the other. Even after a couple of weeks of um, immobil imm immobilization or immobility. So keep an eye on that. Number two, effusion. And we're going to be talking about effusion or swelling inside the knee joint. Um, in our next episode, we're going to be talking a little more specifically about um, intra and extra articular effusion. So make sure you stay tuned after this episode, get to uh, episode number five. We'll talk about how to detect the difference between the two. But effusion um, has been very clearly shown uh, through EMG studies that you can very quickly shut down the muscle. They've done studies where they have had people on a machine, uh, a nice kinetic machine, testing their quadricep strength and then at a later time injected the knee with a saline solution and basically filled it up and um, found a significant amount of weakness like a 20 percent loss of strength immediately after filling the knee with fluid so we know that if they have effusion inside the knee they're going to start to develop some quadriceps shutdown so early effusion reduction is key to optimizing function all right so if we have ways to decrease effusion like elevation and compression which are the two best ways to do that okay ice does not get rid of effusion and we'll be talking about that in future episodes about when do we heat and when do we ice uh, people okay the third problem um, or the third reason why people uh, can develop quadriceps shutdown or reflex inhibition is prolonged immobilization okay we know that prolonged immobility such as the use of an immobilizer on the knee can cause significant quadriceps shutdown and um, as a result, the patient will also start to develop some significant stiffness and tightness in the leg. Okay, And we see this happen quite often. A patient may go down with an injury. It might be a young athlete. It could be an elderly person. Um, and they're placed in an immobilizer for too long a period of time. 
they end up in therapy later on down the road and number one it's stiff it's tight they have a hard time bending it number two they have a hard time contracting their quadriceps and therefore have a loss of function so I am not a big advocate of immobilization for too long if somebody goes down on a field and there's obvious instability and you need to get that person or that athlete off the field to the emergency room while stabilizing the leg and immobilizer is a great idea there are reasons to use immobilizers after surgery for certain types of surgery so that will be indicated and requested by the surgeon other than that I try to get people out of immobilizers as soon as possible especially when they have knee injuries just so that we can reactivate that quadricep and get it moving a little bit better get that knee firing a little bit better all right because the more that capsule moves the more lubrication that's produced produced in the knee and the faster the patient recovers so remember this if your patient has pain effusion or has been immobilized for some time you need to know that the quadriceps are probably not going to be firing well and becoming atrophied and therefore not so responsive to change in direction or activity so if they have quadriceps shut down they're at higher risk of injuring their knee even more all right so keep that in mind and um, please uh, if you want uh, a copy of these notes these show notes go to www.orthoevalpal.com forward slash zero zero four for the fourth episode and um, please uh, stay tuned we're going to be talking about in the next episode intra-articular versus extra-articular swelling and what each of those um, tells us as far as the findings so uh, this is Paul Markey again and thanks and we'll see you in the next episode we hope you've enjoyed this video and for more awesome content go to orthoevalpal.com can't wait to see you there